According to this construct, were all ignorant of God's true identity. The prophets who wrote about him, obviously, we would have to conclude, had a misunderstanding of who he really was. If that's the case, how can we trust the Old Testament writings or the New Testament writings, which is founded upon the Old Testament? The consequences of the Trinity doctrine would be that the Jews did not know what they worship in contrast to the words, very words of Jesus. They only worshiped one individual, divine individual, who described himself with 9,000 singular personal pronouns. And my opponent has stated repeatedly that the revelation of the Trinity took place between the Old Testament and the New Testament. The apostles, he says, were the first experiential Trinitarians. Yet it would be incredible to think that Yahweh's Old Testament covenant people, such as Abraham, who is uh, presented to us as the friend of God, David, who was the man after God's very own heart, uh, on and on I could go, but they all misunderstood God's very fundamental identity, and they never truly experienced God. Yet Moses stood on Mount Sinai and spoke with God mouth to mouth, but apparently he never truly experienced the true God. The Old Testament repeatedly prophesied to us that the Messiah would come and that he would be the one God of the Old Testament. Isaiah 35, Jesus, uh, it, it says this, it says, your God shall come, who? The Jews' God shall come, then shall the blind eyes be opened and the deaf ears unstopped. Who did Isaiah say would come, ladies and gentlemen? The second person of the blessed Holy Trinity? No. The one Old Testament singular God of the Jews. And this self-same God became known as God the Father after he begat, the, begat a son at Bethlehem. Isaiah 44 and 6 said, one king. Now, if anybody just stood up and said there's one king, nobody's going to think that that's three persons. That's the natural understanding of one king is one person. And this one king says in Isaiah 44 and 6, I am the first and I am the last and there is no God beside me. Singular personal pronoun. Isaiah 43, 11, I, singular personal pronoun, am Yahweh. There is no savior besides me. Singular personal pronoun. Isaiah 43, 12, I, singular personal pronoun, am God. No one can deliver out of my hand. Singular, right, singular personal, my hand, one hand. What does that naturally come into your mind when I mention one king and one hand, I, me, what comes to your mind? Three persons in the Trinity or one person? Naturally, one person. I could take you to thousands of verses where one individual speaks with singular personal pronouns, which Mr. White tells us in the New Testament indicates person. When God the Son speaks with a singular personal pronoun, that's one person, he tells us. When God the Father speaks, that's one person. You, but then when we apply that to 70% of the Bible and 4,000 years of Hebrew revelation, the Trinitarian position is undercut. Um, I could take you to over 900 uh, verses where the Hebrew word for echad, or for one, echad, means a singular numerical one, and it's certainly how those who heard it understood it. Uh, of course, the Shema, we could get into that, but don't have time really. But uh, having clearly established now, both biblically and historically, that the God of the Old Testament is one singular individual with absolutely, and there's so much more uh, I could give you, but with absolutely no understanding of a trinity of divine individuals or separate persons. Let's look at the New Testament now. Jesus authenticated the Old Testament in Mark chapter 12, whenever he says that the most of important commandment of all is that we believe that the Lord is one. Now, there are three Greek words for one. And again, Mr. White has, has been pretty hard on me on his dividing line and derided me pretty good. Uh, so I've been ha being, having it packed up for about three months. I've been waiting to get here. So y'all just have mercy on me. But, but, but he, uh, he told me here that Mr. Perkins confuses heist, mia, and hen, the three Greek words that are translated as one. And he says, they just mean one. Well, I know that. That's what I said. I said they mean one. But it's the genders that are important. Heist is generally in the masculine singular. Hen is in the neuter singular. And that, I could get into mia in the feminine singular, but that's really outside of our purposes right now. But Jesus purposefully employs the masculine singular heist in Mark chapter 12, ladies and gentlemen, when he says that the Lord is one. One. Let's see what a few New Testament Greek lexical authorities say about the masculine singular heist. And, and we're going to see it's not abuse, as I 
have been charged with. If I am charged again tonight with abuse of lexicons, I'll just simply pull out my honorable opponent, some of his abuse that I've noted, and I've got the articles right there. But, but you know, let's look at what some, a few lexicons say about this Greek word heis in the masculine singular. Spiros Zodiades, Hebrew and Greek study Bible, page 1686, number 1520, says about heis, this is the first cardinal numeral, numerically one, one person. Thayer's, page 186, says that this is a cardinal numeral, one singular alone. He translates the masculine singular heis in Galatians 3.28 as one person. So does the New English Bible, by the way. Robertson's Word Pictures, volume 5, pages 186 to two, and 278. Speaking of heis in the masculine singular, he says this is one person. I could point you to Bauer's Greek English lexicon as well. But even more importantly, you could look on page 208, footnote 46 of my opponent's book, The Forgotten Trinity, and he argues that the masculine singular denotes personhood. To further illustrate Heist, the Septuagint translation of the Hebrew Echad in Ezekiel 33:24 translates it like this. It, it says that Abraham was only one person or one man. The Tanakh, the RSV, the New Living Translation, the Amplified, the NIV all translate this as one man. This, ladies and gentlemen, or one person. Also, this is the same word that Jesus purposely chose to identify God. Um, Kenneth Weiss Word Studies, Greek New Testament, Volume 1, pages 106 to 107. Heis is masculine and therefore refers to a person. God is one individual. Jesus carefully employs the masculine singular Heis and commands us to believe that the Lord is one person. And he uses the most emphatical word possible for God's identity. I would ask you tonight, how in the world can we force three divine individuals into this very exclusive word? Heist is used almost 100 times in the New Testament relating to personhood, and not one time does it relate to more than one person. This, I'll tell you again, is the word that Jesus Christ himself chose to identify God. Uh, on ABN, while my opponent was discussing John chapter 10 and verse 30, in part 1, he said this. He said in John 10 and 30, uh, Jesus used the neuter one. So it's not one person, he said. Go look it up for yourself. It's his very words. Uh, he says that he employs the neuter, not the masculine. Thus, he's not referring to personhood. In other words, if Jesus would have employed the masculine in John 10, 30, we would have a person. Well, let's just go right back and apply that logic to Mark chapter 12 and verse 29, where Jesus did use the masculine singular highest to identify who God was. And he said that this is the first of all the commandments, the most important commandment. So everything else that we read about the identity of God has to follow fall under this exclusive term. And likewise, uh, in Galatians 3 and 20, also you can read. Um, on the dividing line, Mr. White said that these Greek words simply mean one. Well, that's my whole point. They mean one and not three. Uh, Robertson, Fawcett and Brown, Marvin Vincent, the New English Bible, all translate Galatians 3 and 28 as one man or one person. And it's the masculine singular, heis. In the September 7th, 2010 podcast around the 14 minute mark, Mr. White made this statement. He said, the scriptures do not tell us that God is one person. Well, they sure don't tell us God is three persons either. But if you turn to the Amplified Bible, ladies and gentlemen, all you got to do is turn there and read it for yourself because I'll probably be accused of, of abusing it. But you can read yourself and it says now a go-between or an intermediary has to do with and implies more than one party, yet God is one person. You can read that for yourself. The antithesis is that the function that a mediator does not perform, God is. In other words, a mediator is not a mediator for, for one person, but God is one person. I'm not sure how it could be any plainer than this. It's very, very clear language. Uh, the New English Bible, the Amplified Bible, the RSV, the New Living Translation, the NIV.